Hello, everybody. Thank you for watching once again. And now you can go to Counterculture TV and see everything that, uh, that I'm going to say or spout off at the mouth at. And today, I want to talk about magic. I want to talk about sleight of hand magic. I want to talk about Antifa and the media and the politicians who support them. And I'm going to talk to you about it by talking about the news that happened this week with the New York Nine Proud Boys. Now, John Kingsman and Maxwell Hare, Max Hare, are two friends of mine. Uh, they're really good guys. They're guys who don't run around just fighting everybody that they see, despite what is described to you in the media about who they are and what they were doing uh, last, I believe it was October, last year. Now, let me tell you exactly what happened from first-hand accounts. You know, this is what journalists ought to be doing, but for some reason are dragging their feet on. They already have a story written. And then they go, all right, let's just plug in that these are evil, horrible people and we need to put them on trial, separate them from their families and do God knows what to them. Okay, so what happened was Gavin McInnes was giving a speech at the New York Metropolitan Club. It, when I say speech, by the way, I mean like a comedy speech. I mean like, hey, let's go up there with Ryan Rivera and, and be silly and do like a little skit and stuff like that. So that's what they did. And a bunch of the Proud Boys went to go check it out. And the, the cops were there. Why were the cops at a speech at the New York Republican Metropolitan Club? Well, that's weird. Well, the cops were there because the club was being threatened endlessly leading up to the speech. Because, God forbid, God forbid, we just let a bunch of people who want to see a thing watch the thing. It's not enough that I don't have to watch a thing. It's not like it's it's closed captioning and the whole world has to see this speech. The only people that had to see this speech, this comedy act, this whatever that Gavin was doing that night, are people who chose to go there, sit in that room, buy a ticket, and watch the deal. Well, that's not good enough for the modern left. It's not good enough for democratic socialists because their policies and their ideas only work when they can shut down everybody else's policies and ideas. So what ended up happening was they called the club repeatedly. And keep in mind, the New York Metropolitan Republican Club is literally run by like a bunch of old ladies who were being called and harassed and said, we're going to kill you. We're going to rape you. We're going to this. We're going to that. All the most vile things that you could think of, these elderly women had to pick up the phone and endure. Okay, whatever. It happens sometimes when you're in the public eye. Now, the day before the actual event, the club was vandalized. It was spray painted. They put glue in the locks and they even left a letter. And in the letter, they said, we're not going to be civil. This is not the end. This was barely even reported on if it was reported on at all and now it's like a forgotten little nugget of information this is where the sleight of hand starts coming in because they'll report on the event but eh, i guess the editor of uh huffington post or new york times just just leave the part about all the vandalism and threatening letters out and my favorite thing is they'll if if they mention it all they'll say well, there's no evidence that it was a connection between the people who vandalized the club and sent the letter and the mob of masked communist protesters who showed up the night of the thing. The, and when I say protesters, I'm using the terms that they use because they're terrorists. We know they're terrorists. We know what they do. They terrorize. The reason they're there is because they want to intimidate you from coming in. They put on the masks and they act all mean and angry. And by the way, they need, they need to wear the mask. Have you ever unmasked an Antifa person? Have you ever yanked their mask down? They have no jawline whatsoever. They have a little rat stash and they look fucking frightened, which is why they need to wear these masks and dress up like they're these thugs in ISIS and they're so intimidating because if you actually saw who they were, you would just laugh your balls off as you walk by them. But they want it to be like, no, we're brooding and intimidating. And the more mentally ill they are, they'll bring weapons, they'll bring mace, they'll bring uh, 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 retractable batons. They carry flags with wooden poles, which are effectively just a club that they use. They put flags on, on two by fours as well. We've seen all this. So at the actual event, 
While the speech was going on, the police had to be there. They get everybody in the club, right? Everybody who has a ticket is in the club. There are people outside, including journalists. A journalist named Paul Miller was outside, and Paul Miller was attacked by multiple members of Antifa. Um, three people were arrested and charged for attacking him, assaulting him, and stealing his, his camera stuff. Uh, there were more than three people who jumped him. According to not just Paul, but other people who were out there, they said, uh, yeah, th there was like a mob of people around him kicking him and taking his stuff. Okay, great. Well, they caught three of them, and they arrested three of them that night. On the way out of the club... The police said, okay, we're going to have like all the basically old ladies who came to see Gavin. We're going to escort them out. And then all the Proud Boys are going to come out next. So that's what they did. While they were escorting them, they, they broke up the, the, the mob of, of masked terrorists outside and said, you have to go home. Do not follow us. Do not stalk us. Well, a group of them, I believe there was anywhere between... Five and seven of them circled around the block to meet the guys in the Proud Boys head on as they were trying to get to their cars and trying to get to the subway and trying to get home peacefully, by the way. And what did they do? Well, according to security camera footage and firsthand accounts and eyewitnesses and everything else that you could possibly imagine, including the police who saw it, they were screaming at them, harassing them, following them, and throwing glass jars of, or it's like a vodka bottle, that they fill with their own piss like a monkey. And they were whipping it at the, the Proud Boys as they were walking. Uh, the Proud Boys, who by the way, you have to keep this in mind too, there were people attacked that night and arrested that night. There are letters being sent saying, we're going to get you and we're not civil, and blah, 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 blah. Wonderful. Well, the Proud Boys defended themselves. They would not sit there and just take it, and like, a, like, like some Jesus Christ Gandhi figure, and just get hit in the face with glass bottles of piss. And then God knows what was going to happen after that, because these Antifa mobs, they kind of rely on the fact that they want to do anything that they could possibly do to you. And you're not going to fight back because if you fight back, it's like soccer. They flop on the ground, they hold their knee, and they scream for the ref. And they go, he's attacking me. Can you believe that? Do you believe the violence? And the fucked up thing is this. It has been working. And the reason it's been working is because the Antifa-run media, and I don't mean that metaphorically. I don't mean Antifa-run media like, oh, they're just as bad. No, these members of the media that may as well that are just part of the Antifa thing. The guys who, maybe they're not saying it publicly, but out the corner of their mouths, the guys in the Young Turks and Huffington Post who are like going, oh, good, they beat up a bunch of guys who disagree with us. Oh, they voted for Trump. Cool, let's write an article and, or make a video and call them Nazis and say, oh, the white supremacists got beat up. Well, I guess they got what they deserved. That's the narrative that, that goes forward. And then if people fight back and say... We're not white supremacists in any way, by any measurable standard, I'm not a white supremacist. And I was attacked that day, and you're not reporting on it. They go, do you see them trying to cover their tracks? And they all just go along with it at the same time. And I'm not a big conspiracy guy. Everybody knows that about me, that I don't just cling to every conspiracy. I like Alex Jones, but I don't believe Alex Jones every single last time. There are some things he's accurate on, like Jeffrey Epstein and Hillary's too sick to campaign and things like that, that people said, oh, he's a crazy man. And it turns out, hey, he was 100% right. But I, my whole thing isn't, oh, let's look for the conspiracy. But it's just a little odd, just a little odd that no media requests were made. Now, media requests are always made to the Proud Boys and to Proud Boy Magazine, to the official site. No matter what, the stupidest little thing could happen. And if a guy once tweeted out that he supported the Proud Boys, that uh, will be swarmed by media requests and told, oh my God, you know, these evil Proud Boys are, you know, at it. What comments do you have? So they could, because they think that Proud Boys are stupid. Because they've only been told that they're these stupid apes that don't know anything about anything. And then they ask for comment, and then they're usually responded to very intelligently. And these days, uh, Enrique Torrio, 
who went to Portland, we're going to get at that in two seconds, uh, is really good at dissecting them, making intelligent comments, and making the Proud Boys actually look good because they're not doing anything wrong. And they don't just get the, the weakest member who can't really talk in front of a camera and put them in front of there and take something out of context. It usually doesn't go well for the media when you go, hey, do the Proud Boys want to comment on this? That's really interesting because all of a sudden, after this huge thing happened, where the Proud Boys are on video defending themselves and fighting off Antifa terrorists, surrounded by police. Police move in and say, stop, stop, stop. One of the Antifa guys is crying on the ground, and the cop says, are you hurt? Do you need an ambulance? Do you want to press charges? And the response was, fuck you, pig. That is the truth. So that's a no. Okay, great. That's a no. So... The cops just did their job and said, All right, everybody go home. You know, you guys go that way. You guys go that way. And the guys in the Proud Boys complied, did exactly what the police told them to do, like they always do, because they're not out looking for trouble, right? The guys in New York are not out looking for trouble that night. Well, what happened was it was tweeted about by Bill de Blasio, the mayor of New York, the Antifa mayor. He should just be known as the Antifa mayor from now on. And Andrew Cuomo, the Antifa governor, and the district attorney in New York all said, hate has no place in New York, and we're going to bring this evil mob of white supremacist hate group to justice. Didn't mention Antifa. Didn't say, hey, all this street violence between the two of you, just to pretend to be, they didn't even pretend to be fair. The narrative going forward the day after was there's an evil gang of fascist white supremacists, which was, like, I'm talking in the headlines. They weren't even making bones about trying to pretend like they, they were telling the truth even a little. Evil gang of fascist white supremacists was wandering around New York just beating up anyone who looked like they disagreed with them. And here's the funny thing. I've actually showed the videos to to just working class guys I know who have no political interests whatsoever. They, they could care less about politics. And I showed them the videos and said, all right, this is the video of what happened. You read about this in the paper, right? This is what happened. And they see it and they just sort of look puzzled and go, so the guys in the black masks, the, those are the guys that the media and, and the governor and the mayor are trying to tell us are the good guys in this scenario? Right. Yeah, no, that's not going to fly. Because when you show people, and it's not even like I'm showing them the truth in like some uh, very detailed way. It's like, no, why don't you watch the basic video of what happened that night? Here, here's my phone. I'm playing it. What do you think what happened? And they're like, oh, those guys are, are, are evil and fucked up. And they're messing with the other guys. Oh, and they threw a thing, and uh, earlier in the night, they're trying to grab people's MAGA hats off their heads and, you know, doing all this stuff, and they're saying, we're going to get you. We're not civil. Ah. And, oh, three of them were arrested earlier that night for just assaulting random journalists because they don't like being on camera. You know why they don't like being on camera? Because when you're doing something wrong, you don't like showing your face when you do it. Ask the Ku Klux Klan. Ask ISIS, when you know that your ideology is not rooted in something that is inherently nonviolent and peaceful, and at the end of the day, they all have to know this, even even if they think that they that that it is or they say it is, on a fundamental level, mental illness can only take you so far, and meth can only take you so far, uh, and it is believe me, taken Antifa to new heights. Um, but they have to know, yeah, we're really not being peaceful and we're absolutely just harassing peaceful people here. So we should probably cover our faces because our moms might get mad at us if they see. Well, what happens is Antifa that night ends up doxing the guys in the Proud Boys, publicly saying, these are the guys who were there that night, blah, blah, blah. Here they all are. Get them. And warrants are put out for their arrest. They arrested nine guys. I think maybe it's actually, we call it the New York Nine, but I think it was 10 guys now that were arrested. Most of them got like slap on the wrist probation. They literally were arrested for being in the vicinity of a fight at the time, most of them. 
Um, and then there were stronger charges brought up on like three or four of the other guys. One of them took a deal where basically he gets weekends at Rikers Island, which is bullshit. And according to what I've heard from, from firsthand sources, everybody at Rikers when he has to check in is like, why are you here? That's bullshit. You shouldn't be doing time. This is like a maybe you get probation if they want to push it type deal. This isn't a like you need to be locked in a cage every weekend for the next year type deal. But that's the, the plea deal that he took because, hey, it takes a lot of money to go to trial with it. And two of the guys raised a lot of that money, um, John and Max. John and Max then went to trial. They said, listen, everything's looking good. They said the prosecutor is is practically shitting himself because th his case is entirely built on these are evil fascist white supremacists. And it's very easily debunked when they put these guys on the stand. Uh, John Kingsman in particular just sort of points and goes, I don't know, ask my black wife and four black kids how racist they think I am. But John's a big guy, looks like a big hillbilly with a beard. He's their perfect enemy. So they love showing pictures of him. They never mention the fact that he has, uh, a, you know, an integrated family. And by the way, it doesn't even matter. But let's play by their rules. You're a racist, you're a racist, you're a racist. Well, I'm in love with a black woman, and all my children are black. Well, what do you, how racist can I possibly be? Racist. Something in you is racist. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll come back to that. Whatever. So they go on trial. Trial lasted way longer than it should have. Uh, it was supposed to last like two weeks. I think they stretched it into like the fourth week and they were found guilty. Only in New York would they be found guilty. And the reason they were found guilty is not because the prosecutors like they might be racist and they might be these hate group violent neo-fascists or anything like that. It had nothing to do with that. It had everything to do with I believe, and so does the defense, uh, they believe, that they looked at the video and they went, well, you did throw some punches, and technically in New York, you can't do that, and even if people are menacing you and intimidating you and, and, and trying to attack you, you did throw punches, so technically speaking, there was more than, than three of you, and in New York, according to the law, if there's more than three people in a fight, it is now a gang assault and attempted riot, which you saw the video once again, doesn't look like a riot, it looks like a fight. It looks like a fight between a lot of people, but it's a fight. It's basically a bar fight that lasted 15 seconds and the cops came in and said, stop, stop, stop. Everybody chilled out and then they said, okay, anyone want to press charges? No, okay, everyone go home. That was the end of the story, the end of the conversation. So at the end of the day, what ends up happening is these guys are now awaiting their sentencing and they're facing up to 15 years. Now, not that you would know it from all the uh, hysteria that the media, the media is gloating about this openly. The media is publishing pictures of John saying, hey, get that camera out of my face. And they're going, oh my God, he just zig heiled the camera. And he's like, no, he didn't. He didn't yell zig heil and do that. But most people of the public aren't going to read into this and read between the lines and this and that. And they know that. They know that. So they take this cursory glance and they go, oh, look, a picture of him with his hand sticking out. He must be zig heiling with his left hand, not blocking a camera from looking at him, but this downward angle of him just going, stop. And they go, oh. He zig heiled the camera. What? Look at this Nazi in court. That's how brazen he is. Now, never mind. The other, the three Antifa people who came in just wearing like homemade t-shirts that say, I didn't do it and stuff like that. Now, those guys who openly just beat on people in the street, by the way, openly just beat on people in the street and stole their stuff, according to witnesses, they, they got... Slap on the wrist probation. They got, ah, whatever, get out of here. The story was was barely even a blip. It wasn't even covered. If it was covered at all, it was like some little internet article that was like, oh yeah, some Antifa people went, but turns out they didn't do anything wrong because they just got a slap on the wrist. Now, the Proud Boys, on the other hand, every time one of them took a plea deal where they got like five hours of community service or something like that, uh, of the nine people, 10 people who were arrested, Every single time that happened, they literally just went, 
oh wow, they're ple- they're taking deals and look, they were guilty and he they pled guilty or no contest to this and that and this and that and the media made it like it's this huge thing all the while not asking anybody involved for comment. They just simply made up their own story as they went along of like how everyone should view this and here's the the thing that kicks me in the teeth with the whole with the whole deal that conservative media got so spooked by just the sheer volume and the sheer amount of these stories that were coming in from the the leftist media who were so sure who were so brazen and said fascist white supremacist violent hate group it is what it is took a quote here and there out of context from like Gavin himself. Oh, he said this once. He did this. Without the context of what he was talking about or why he said that, they just clip little lines and said, that little line defines everything about these people. And that's all you need to know about the Proud Boys and Gavin McInnes and these right-wingers. And they're trying to malign all right-wingers, the people who don't like generalizing. You can't even generalize them by a pronoun want to malign all right-wingers as this violent, evil hate group who is just taken over. And they tried to even make it like the Antifa people weren't Antifa people. These people in black masks wearing communist stuff and patches and, and whatnot, throwing bottles of piss and openly engaging people in street warfare. They literally tried to turn it into, they were just random people walking down the street that day. I've re- I read multiple articles when this happened that characterized the situation like just people walking around New York were getting beat up by the Proud Boys for no reason whatsoever. Which brings us to Portland. Portland was uh, uh, the Patriot Prayer thing that happened with Joe Biggs and Enrique Torrio, where they said the Proud Boys will be in Portland, and we're going to do it legal, and we're going to be nonviolent, we're going to be safe, and if we're engaged, we're going to defend ourselves, because this has happened in Portland over and over and over again. So they said, okay, this is what we're doing. So they go to Portland, and they played it beautifully. They said, all we're going to do is we're going to show up to prove that we can walk anywhere which is legal to walk because we are not breaking any laws and we are not these monsters that the media keeps mischaracterizing us about and then asking us for no comment because we don't want to give hate a platform after we just concluded that you're a hate group. Uh, we're not even going to look at your website. We're not even going to look at any quotes that any Proud Boys have said other than if we could find a guy who sort of says he's Proud Boy affiliated and he said some, some fucked up shit and nobody knows who he is then we'll we'll print that all over the place you know some guys in like some private messenger group who everyone's like who is that guy what what are you and it's like oh yeah he said something really really off color once and it's like right that didn't represent the group and no one knows these people you're just like cherry picking the the most weird fucked up possibly drunken rants that people go i love the proud boys and they should go and kick more ass and it's like yeah yeah okay that's not what we represent it's not what the proud boys are fundamentally it's not what they are and enrique proved that by going to portland showing up going here we are they did a quick little prayer then they go we did what we came to do Let's get out of here, gentlemen. Now, all that did was attract cra- like hundreds, 300 Antifa members. Portland is very Antifa heavy. And they proceeded to go, okay, they're not here. Well, let's just beat up random people in the street. Oh, wait, hold on. There's a bus that might be them on the bus. Let's go after the bus with a hammer and break the windows on the bus. Let's let's go after people in the street, beat on some older guy, some middle-aged guy, while his wife stands over to him, uh, uh, while he bleeds unconscious, and his wife stands over to him to protect him. Let's scream and surround them and ha ha ha, how dare you vote for Trump, motherfucker. Ha ha ha, we got ya, yeah, yeah. Let's scream at police and chant at police to kill themselves and scream at, let's have a bunch of white Antifa guys yelling at a black working man, a black cop, and say, oh, you're a race traitor, you're a race traitor, ha 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 ha, and do their whole Antifa bit, chasing people down in the street who they think might disagree with them. They don't even ask because you don't have a conversation with fascists. Don't give fascists a platform. And if I assume you're a fascist, 
I should just be beating you up in the street. And we're heroes. And according to people like, oh, I don't know, the governor of New York's brother, Chris Cuomo, Chris Fredo Cuomo, he actually sat there and said, they're like, they're like the D-Day soldiers fighting the Nazis. He's actually said that. There's been a lot of main, mainstream, what's considered mainstream media people who when they comment on Antifa, really act like, well, these people, what are they doing wrong? They're just the nicest folks who, who've ever, ever lived and God bless them. And oh, they're just out there protesting. Most of them are really peaceful. Oh, don't don't pick and choose. the. Now, they love to go, let's not just pick and choose the clips of uh, Antifa people committing violence and intimidating people and trying to, you know, be as menacing as possible and holding weapons. I mean, dude, they, they lost a hard battle with Rufio Panman when he knocked that guy out because they tried to spin it like, look at the evil, violent Proud Boys knocking people out in the streets, but you cannot show the actual clip without watching him protecting people behind him while some guy wails on him with a retractable baton and he blocks it with his left and says, okay, enough's enough, boom, and clocks him and the guy hits the ground like a fucking pile of shit. You can't show the clip. So most people who saw that laughed their ass off and went, good. Yeah, don't let a guy hit people in the streets with a baton. Where were the police? And they tried to get Rufio arrested that day too, keep in mind. They absolutely did. They tried to get him arrested. Now here's here's the crazy thing though, that this is the first time in, in my lifetime, I don't know if ever, but the politicians seem to have all agreed to not uphold the law as long as the people breaking the law are, are ideologically on their side, even if they try to paint Antifa as the extremist. And I would love to say most of the left isn't, isn't for Antifa, but I'm not going to do that. And the reason I'm not going to do that is because we don't get that credit. Right-wingers don't get that credit. If some guy, for example, the El Paso shooter was a white supremacist, I don't know what that has to do, by the way, with being right-wing. Simply adding racism to a political ideology and how you think the economic system ought to, run, ought to run does not make it automatically right wing. If you take Bernie Sanders and Bernie Sanders comes out tomorrow and goes, I believe all the things I believe. And in addition to that, I'm also a racist. He's not suddenly a right winger. He's still a leftist. He's still a socialist. He's just also a racist. And I feel the same way about the El Paso guy who was like an eco-fascist, which fascism isn't even right-wing. Fascism is inherently control and hamper free speech and more government control. And these idiots in Antifa don't even understand that. So they don't even understand how fascist they're being, which I know is at this point a cliche because we've all said it till we're blue in the face. You know, Antifa are the real fascists. And anyone who knows that already knows that. But the El Paso shooter then is painted with a wide brush of like, this is what we voted for with Trump, huh guys? This is the, what Trump supporters want. More people like this who don't like immigrants who shot a bunch of people. And it's like, no, El Paso was horrible. And thank God a guy with a gun got there when he did. So more people didn't get hurt and didn't get shot. Oh, don't worry about the guy in Ohio who was a card carrying Antifa member who killed people and, and then I believe was shot by police. I'm sorry. These things sometimes get a little murky or confusing because uh, they all blend together sometimes. But the Ohio shooter was a card carrying Antifa member. Do people report on that? I'll guarantee you this. If he was a Proud Boy, they would be doing nothing except reporting on this and calling for the Proud Boys to be named a domestic terrorist organization. And there should at least be an investigation if people who are members of a group, any group, just start randomly shooting people in the streets based on the ideology of that group saying, look, I am perfectly in line with the ideology of this group, much like ISIS, much like groups, uh, terror groups like Jamaat al fukra much like terror groups like Hamas. You should at very least, if they say we are following the rules of ISIS to the letter of the rules and I need to go out and hurt people in the streets, random people, until they understand what we're going for, that group should at very least be investigated. Very least, they should say, is it true that he was following the rules of this group and the manifestos of this group and the, and the uh, rhetoric of this group? And does the rest of the group feel the same way? And can we do some kind of investigation? And I guarantee that would happen. Guarantee it. If 
some guy in the Proud Boys did it or some person who was part of Patriot Prayer did something like that. Here's the thing. I've watched clip after clip after clip after clip after clip of Antifa assaulting random people. Whether it's at NYU where they pepper sprayed Gavin and tried to just physically fight people as they came through the doors of NYU. Whether it was at the... Um, get the name of it, but the Cernovich uh, party where they assaulted an older Jewish man on his way down the street where that redheaded guy, I forget his name, put the guy in the ICU uh, by bludgeoning him about the head. Random guy on the street, random older Jewish guy. And this person in the name of fighting Nazis just randomly beat him up because I'm looking to beat people up. So you see, ha ha ha, that guy's in a pool of his own blood. Now what are you guys going to do? And they think they're scary. They think they're in a movie. But here's what they don't understand. They don't really understand violence. They, they've never really been hit in the face before like a lot of working class people have. So they don't understand the consequences of violence, whether it's getting arrested or getting beat up yourself. In the case of the, uh, the guy who got hit by Rufio, that guy's never been hit in the face in his life. Otherwise, you wouldn't be running around with a uh, retractable baton with impunity. Because the thing is this, that they know they have protection of their politicians. If they're in a democratically run city, they know that well, I'm not, I'm, he's not going to push the DA to uh, prosecute me to the fullest extent of the law here. I could get away with probation. I'm a first offender. I'm a third offender. Whatever. And they're right. They're right. Ted Wheeler in Portland actually comes out and says, eh, it was really a big nonviolent thing. And I'm watching clip after clip after clip of horrific violence happening, including people be attacking other people in buses with hammers in your city. And you had nothing to say about that. And he seems to only have something to say about people on the right who were there, never had, uh, and oh, the people on the right, thank God they were well behaved. And it's like the only time Proud Boys or any other right-wing group seem to get into a fight is when they're attacked, ever. I can't, I, there isn't one example. And if there is, please show me, please send me the clip, please tag me in it, of right-wing protesters, rally goers, speech goers, debate observers, or anything else. I'm yet to see one example of People just going, let's just surround someone who sort of looks liberal, knock them to the ground and start beating on them and steal their shit. There isn't one example. There's an example of this every time Antifa gets together. Every time. They are not exactly out to win hearts and minds. They are out to basically have the back of the people who already endorse them, even if it's out the corner of their mouth, like Bill de Blasio, who endorses them by not mentioning them. By not mentioning them. Proud Boys were on the street having a fight. Right-wingers were on the street having a fight. Who were they fighting with? How come that's never mentioned? Because here's the thing. There are no examples of the Proud Boys showing up at at. A, a liberal event, whatever it might be, and just randomly attacking people or trying to intimidate people the way Antifa does. I, and I love the, oh my God, I, got, I love the rhetoric of, well, I had to feel safe. I didn't feel safe there because the Proud Boys were speaking and this happened and that happened. And it's like, you didn't feel safe. Why didn't you feel safe? Did they surround you and start barking at you and pushing you and touching you and blocking you from walking down the road the way Antifa does? Because to me, it's like that shows you're looking for a fight. That, especially when they do the human let's block people's paths in the road bullshit, you're basically saying, I dare you to cross this line and let's see what happens when you do because these assholes think they're in a movie. These assholes have never been in a fight. They don't understand the consequences of actual violence and they think that they're in a movie and they're smiling and <laughs> yeah, let's go. And, and it's not like they're MMA fighters. They're not tough guys. They seem to be astoundingly bad at everything they're doing, but it's never reported because the media is on their side and they know it. And they laugh about it. They, they're laughing about the guys in the Proud Boys who are going to be uh, sentenced in October. They're laughing their ass off that two of my friends are going to be in a cage 
over something they shouldn't have even been arrested for. And if it happened in most states, they wouldn't have even been arrested for, let alone the mayor, the DA, and the governor, all publicly putting it out there that they have an agenda to really twist the knife with these guys. By the way, uh, just a small note. So whatever became of the Antifa people that were attacked? I mean, they found the Proud Boys that night or the next day. Everyone was doxxed. I wonder what happened to the Antifa guys who were, who were attacked. You know, the guys who chased the other guys down the street and threw things at them and were trying to stop them from going home that day. What happened to those guys? We don't know. We don't know. We don't know if any of them were injured apparently not because nobody uh came forward no one sought treatment no one said oh yeah i know that person they never widely publicized um their faces even though we even had pictures of their faces they never widely publicized it in any publications of note and said hey if you know these people in new york let us know we want to press charges which it would have been delightful to have them come to court and actually hear what they had to say and uh, why they were there that evening. But we don't know. Nobody knows. The reason nobody knows is because nobody asked. The governor didn't ask. The mayor didn't ask. The media didn't ask. The DA certainly didn't ask because their whole objective was we're going to put these other guys through court as much as we can and try to put them in a cage, taking John Kingsman away from his family. Costing John Kingsman his job, by the way. For for what? Well, I was I defended myself in a, in, a, in a deal where we were being attacked. I was watching people get attacked who were part of the group that I was part of, who were part of the the collection of people walking down the street trying to go home. We were being attacked and intimidated. And the police were instructed not to do anything. My theory, that I don't think the police were told, hey, make sure you hold those people back. No. Why? Because this is Bill de Blasio's New York. The same New York where they're throwing water on cops and the cops were instructed, you, you can't do anything if they're dumping buckets of water on you. That's Bill de Blasio in a nutshell. That's the Antifa mayor in a nutshell. And they are all happy. Ted Wheeler, Bill de Blasio, Andrew Cuomo, and all these other mayors of these liberal places, all these other you know people who sit on the, the, the city board or, pe or governors or whoever, senators, congressmen, you don't hear AOC talking about this stuff. Nope, because they are more than happy to just sit there and let it happen and let the media tell the story that they want to hear, which is evil fascists attacking random, innocent, wonderful people while that's the magic trick. This is what they're doing over here. And over here is all footage. Over here is all footage of random attacks on random people who, because they had an American flag in their hands, because they wore a MAGA hat, because they voted for Donald Trump and had, how dare they have the chutzpah to say so publicly. I voted for Donald Trump and I'm not ashamed of it. How dare these evil people say they voted for the guy who's actually the president and is doing a pretty great job. How dare they? You should be ashamed. You should lock yourself in a closet and you should never come out and be afraid to tell people what you support politically. And on the other hand, we're going to shove it loudly in your faces, whether it's child drag queen shows or what pronoun you have to use or we're going to control every tweet you've ever had in the last 10 years that seems to be their game and they're winning because like they said in uh one flew over the cuckoo's nest antifa likes a, a rigged game de blasio likes a rigged game the squad like a rigged game. Hillary likes a rigged game and the leftists like a rigged game. And anytime conservatives say, okay, let's play by the rules of your rigged game. You say that we're racist because we're all white. Well, we're not all white. Look, here's plenty of black people, plenty of Asian people. Oh, so now you're trying to shove your tokens in our face. And it's like calling someone a token for not believing in you and being what you consider the wrong race is pretty racist, don't you think? Oh, now you're trying to... Try. And it always... The rules will always flip as the circumstances dictate. And again, back in the past, I feel like if somebody said, I'm going to beat up a bunch of people because I love whoever, Rudy Giuliani or Ronald Reagan or Bill Clinton or anybody like that, 
that politician would be forced to denounce them and go, yeah, that's not what I want from my people. Do not act that way. That makes us all look bad. And I am consistently saying that anytime I see anyone who says, I want to do violence in the name of the right, or anyone who's even remotely like uh, racist or just gross or, or, or misinformed or lying, and they're on the right, I shake my head and go, yeah, don't listen to that person. It makes us all look bad and it gives the left more ammunition. And of course, there's people on the right who fucking act like that, um, but they're not remotely doing it to the extent of Antifa and because the right is trying to keep it under control. Anytime the crazy person wants to be in front of the camera, for the most part, the right goes, yeah, that person doesn't represent, that, that person doesn't know what they're talking about. That person's an idiot. That's not what all conservatives are. What are you, a fucking moron? They never, there is nothing, nothing that goes too far for the left. And that is the rig game that they're playing, that they want to micromanage every single inch of language coming out of a right-winger's mouth, a conservative's mouth, a libertarian's mouth, whatever you want to call, a Republican, whatever you want to call yourself. They want to police every single syllable, every single, if, if you use the wrong inflection, you're dog whistling, they want to lump you all in with the Klan. And, they, and they're they're doing it as best they can with every speech, and they're hardly ever called out in a, in a large public way to answer for the nonsense that they say, because there is nothing, there is nothing to the Democrats, leftists, liberals, progressives, or whatever they are in between, there's nothing that's too far for them. There's nothing. That's why there's, there's videos, uh, I, got, I think the guy from Turning Point USA did a video just saying, denounce Antifa. Just denounce Antifa. Say, I, this is a terrorist organization. They are. They're absolutely a terrorist organization. Why don't, why don't Democratic politicians want to just denounce that? What reason could they possibly have? The only reason is because they kind of like that these people are on our side creating mayhem in the street. And here's the thing that we're going to leave off on. Despite the fact that our own politicians aren't going to enforce laws against people who create who break the laws in the name of their own ideology the next move they're going to do is they're going to start going after the conservatives who are the victims like they did in new york they're going to go after people like joe biggs and enrique torrio they're going to say because you showed up that day and dared to get a permit and have a, a prayer a rally whatever you want to call it and listen, I'm not a rally guy, but they're going to start saying if you do want to have a rally and it's in the name of anything less than progressive and progressives show up, Antifa shows up to beat you guys up, if that happens, we're suing you and we're going to take your money and we're going to sue you to death and we're going to make sure that you just hemorrhage cash and we ruin your life. Ah, ha, ha. Ever get the feeling you've been cheated?